be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. All right. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We welcome all of you this morning, online and sitting here in the pew. Did you hear the songs they played? Do you know what they were? Can you remember them? Were you listening or were you talking? <laughs> Standing on the promises. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I love to tell the story. That's what it's all about. Amen. Some announcements this morning. Sit back because there's a lot of them. <laughs> Not in any particular order. There is still an opportunity for you to purchase ice cream, June Dice Art. I know everyone knows her, but thank you for raising your hand. We'll be in the community hall after the service if you would like to purchase any ice cream. So there is some left over. There's no chocolate. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any chocolate, unfortunately, but there are other flavors. So the flowers on the altar, the beautiful flowers on the altar, are from the memorial service for Miss Patty Catton. So, they are beautiful. The stewardship meeting will be rescheduled, so there is not one this week. So keep that in mind, those of you who that involves. God's Gang Lunch is on Tuesday at 11.30 at the Deli at the Con Square. Please RSVP to Joanne Kramer. Raise your hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> by tomorrow at noon. <coughs> also involving Joanne Kramer and some others, the Little Rock Cafe kickoff will be Sunday, September 3rd from 8 to 9.30, if you don't know what that's about. We will be serving a hot breakfast the first Sunday of every month. And again, Amen. the first one is Sunday, September 3rd. If you have any questions, please see Joanne about that. Please let Joanne or Bob McCrory know if you plan on attending, so we will know how many to plan for. Bob is over here, I'm pointing, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Family fun night or family game night, whatever you want to call it. Saturday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And some of you may have seen the email, Carol Dakin needs a ride. You'll <coughs> see Joanne Kramer about that if she can help with that. Also, the Women's Christian Fellowship will start meeting again September the 12th in the Westlake Fellowship Room at 1.30 p.m. We're going to begin a new book study, Women of the Bible Speak, by Shannon Green. Um, and when Iris returns, you can see her about that if you need a book. But otherwise, September 12th in Westlake Fellowship at 1.30 p.m. All women are invited, Amen. and you will enjoy this study. You really will. And you will enjoy the group if you've never been before. <laughs> this Sunday is Rock the Walk and Let's Pray for our missions and outreach team and for the Women's Christian Fellowship. Last week we prayed for nurture and spiritual development, and I felt the prayers. I'm head of spiritual development. I felt the prayers. So, and we do need those as a church for all of our people involved in. There is a sign-up sheet for the small group that will be starting in September that Pastor Steve talked a little about last week. It is on the altar rail, so please sign up. Please, please sign up. If you want to host or teach, either one. And study is the real God. Yes, sir, Mr. Miller. Men's Fellowship, Bible Fellowship, will start September the 9th at 8 a.m. in Wesley Fellowship. Men of the church, that's your option. The women have the Women's Christian Fellowship. That's your option for Bible study. There is a video that we are going to see 
about this month. There's a deep sense of unease in our rapidly changing <coughs> world. We all know something has been lost, but we don't know why or where it all leads. Pop culture tells us it's all about me and that we should worship our own creations rather than the creator. In politics, the end justifies the means. In relationships, love means self-satisfaction. In life, status and appearance are what count. In church, confusion replaces clarity and conviction. Our faulty and distorted view of God is at the root of all our problems. But what if we viewed God differently? What if we saw him the way he longed for us to see him? We can worship a God who is holy, wise, and just, one whose faithfulness and goodness are matched by his power and sovereignty over all things. This is a God who can deliver us from evil and transform lives. This is a God worth worshiping. The way back, the path of hope starts with knowing God for who he really is. We need to know the real God. I think it will be very exciting and challenging and interesting. So please, please join us in these studies when they begin. Uh, if you wonder why I'm up here, uh, Dolores is bringing the message this morning, and we will be praying for her.
I want to say it corporately. You bless us. I wish I could bottle up what we're hearing up here. Amen? Yeah. You guys are incredible. We're going on the road. Right. <laughs> Let's go show not really saying a whole lot or anything. Anyway, my cousin, who is also a pastor, um, came and uh, went into the room and 
started singing Blessed Be the Storm. And my dad, who hadn't probably said much for the last few days, started singing. And he knew every word still and sang along with him. So that's the reason for the tears. And um, I'm sorry for that, but I felt like I needed to tell you that story. Because every time I sing that, I, I think of my dad. And it's just a wonderful memory. So it is a praise also. Other prayers this morning. Yes, ma'am. They didn't do your procedure? No, because when we got there, uh, all the rest of the family was crazy because half of the time they were not crazy. And they had a heart attack on the first day of the procedure. So we're not sure. <laughs> we're not sure what the procedure is. And we don't have the equipment that it was when they had the procedure. So we just can't see it. And yet my doctor said we should pray for Fanny. You prayed for patience for Fanny yeah. and for health. Saw another hand back here. And she still came and helped with the funeral reception <laughs> and brought a dish, by the way. So. No. <laughs> One. Oh, no. Any more prayer? I don't have a prayer, but if I can come up with questions. Absolutely. Come along.
And that is a praise. Any other prayer concerns? Warren, you're number one on the praise. Oh, good. <laughs> Other praises this morning? Yes, praise for a beautiful, beautiful wedding for the pastor's daughter yesterday. She made it through without falling like a baby. <laughs> and the beautiful banner that Joanne put in here. And praise for the beautiful day today. Yeah. The beautiful weather and not so hot. Other praises this morning? Oh, there's got to be more. That is a praise for family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. come to you this morning, some people with heavy hearts, some people with joyous hearts. We thank you for all the joys that we have in life. We thank you for the strength to go through the trials that we have to go through. But we know that you are with us through everything. You are with us on the mountaintop. You are with us in the valley, and you are with us all those places in between. Give us the grace to accept your wonderful gifts. We pray for Dee this morning as she delivers the message. We know she is anointed to give this message, and we thank you for, again, for your grace in giving her that anointing. Be with all the prayer concerns that have been raised. Be with those blessings that we have shared. Help us to rejoice in those blessings, in those even little things that seem so small compared to the blessings that we might want. But we know that you answer every prayer. Sometimes it's not the answer we expect. Sometimes it's not the answer we necessarily want. And sometimes it's to wait until the time is right for what you want to give us. Be with us as we continue in this service. Help us always to stand on your promises and to lean on your everlasting and to know that you will continue to be with us wherever we go and in whatever situation we find ourselves. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' powerful and mighty and precious name. And we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now if we could pray one more time for the offering. Lord, you give us so much in so many ways. This is a time to give a portion back to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He thinks he's going to sidetrack. He's not kidding. <laughs> when he told you you're not good enough, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight. When he told you you're not worthy. When he told you you're not loved. When he told you you're not beautiful. You'll never be enough. Told you you should run away. You'll 
never find a home when he told you you were dirt and you should be ashamed when he told you you could be the one that grace could never change Thank you, Craig. <laughs> we saw Zach Williams at Harrington Fair, and Craig said, wow, that song really spoke to me. I'm going to learn it. And learn it he did. It's always an honor and a privilege and a humbling thing to come before you with a message. But I have one today. Do you long to be more Christ-like every day in your thoughts, your words, and your actions. As followers of Jesus, our answer should be a resounding yes. Living for Jesus can be a daily struggle, though. In our humanness, we all fall short. Amen? I know I do. We all have good intentions but we fail to listen when God whispers in our ear. In the busyness of our daily life, we neglect to follow the spiritual disciplines of confession and prayer and reading our Bibles. The good news is, though, God extends his unconditional love and grace to all of us, and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to help us in our walk with Jesus. In recent weeks, the praise team introduced a new song, and it was called The Jesus Way. And the very first time I heard it, I'm always playing music, especially in my car, I went, wow, what an awesome song. So I asked Mark, do you think we can learn it? He said, yeah, I think we can. And we do. <laughs> and as we were singing it that first Sunday, the words hit me directly in my heart. I began to question myself. Am I living the way Jesus has taught me to live? Am I choosing the Jesus way in my daily life? I can tell you the Holy Spirit was speaking to me that day. I felt like a hypocrite. The message in this song is powerful. 
The words are thought-provoking and convicting. For Phil Wickham, the singer-songwriter, this song is a line-in-the-sand kind of song. It is about the choice we have to either accept or reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a statement of who we are as followers of Christ. It contrasts the way we can choose to live and how we can choose to respond to whatever comes our way. You know, many times when I listen to a song, I like to see how the lyrics line up with scripture. What verse or teaching is the songwriter trying to convey? So that's what we're going to do today. I'd like to share with you how the scriptures line up with this song, The Jesus Way. The first line of the song says, if you curse me, I will bless you. Ever had someone curse you? Mm -hmm. As Pastor Steve mentioned in his sermon last the other week, it seems to be the norm today, using bad lang language and saying whatever we want, when we want. The tongue is a dangerous and deadly weapon, though. It can be used to tear down or to build up. James 3, 8 through 10 says, But no human being can tame the tongue. It is, a it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of that same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? You get that? Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. We sing praises to God on Sunday morning and then curse or speak harm to another human being in the very next hour. 1 Peter 3, 9 through 11 says, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, on the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Because of our sinful nature, we cannot rely on our own strength to stop what sometimes spews out of our mouths. It is only as we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus and allow his Holy Spirit to reign in our hearts that we learn to have self-control over what we say and do. Ever heard the saying, engage brain before opening mouth? or think before you speak. We cannot control others, but we can control how we choose to respond. Do we quickly step into the flesh and respond in an unchristlike manner, or do we choose to demonstrate mercy and grace by responding in love and kindness? The next lyric is, if you hurt me, I will forgive you. Anyone here ever been hurt by another person's words, actions, or attitudes? I think of all the lyrics of this song, this hit home for me personally. I have been hurt many times in my life by the words and actions of others. Anybody else here with me? Hurtful words can cut like a knife to the heart. The wound can be so deep, it takes a very long time to work through it. Hurt can cause one to become resentful, bitter, angry. And believe me, Satan will do his best to keep us in that pit. Just when we think we're coming out of the darkness of the hurt and the betrayal, Satan will bring it all back to the surface, filling our thoughts with, you really going to let him get away with that? Or, you have to retaliate and vindicate yourself. Or, 
see, you really are worthless. Well, you know, folks, there's only one way to find healing, and that is through prayer and looking to the living word of God for answers. When we take that hurt and lay it at the feet of Jesus, he alone can give us the strength to overcome the evil one and his attacks. We can drown out his voice by praying through the Holy Spirit who gives us the grace we need to overcome that anger and bitterness and find true forgiveness in our hearts. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other as God in Christ has forgiven you. We must first seek God's forgiveness for our sins that we may be free to forgive others. Forgiveness is a conscious act on our part. And although it may be difficult at times, it is essential to our, well, our well-being emotionally and, yes, physically. Being unwilling to forgive can lead to physical ailments just such as chronic pain, fatigue, and depression. It can negatively impact our relationships and impede our spiritual life. How can we be in tune with God when we are being disobedient to his word? Hasn't Pastor Steve been teaching us through the Lord's Prayer in the past several weeks? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, if, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Ouch. I will share with you something very personal. And it was the day I forgave my father. It was a life changer for me. The anger and bitterness I had toward him just disappeared. Jesus heard my prayer and freed me to live my life without a burden I had carried in my heart for so long. I was no longer living under the sin of lack of forgiveness, and I felt as though a great weight had been lifted, and it made a huge difference in my life. I was finally free from that burden. In the most difficult of times, God can use our pain to prepare us to share our life experiences with others in their struggles. And just the other day, and I don't believe in coincidences, I was meant to hear this song. I heard Katie Nicole's new song. It's called Hold On. I had to find the backstory of why she wrote this song. She had suffered from scoliosis from the age of five. At age 15, surgery was performed to straighten her spine. But even after the surgery, she still suffered from persistent and agonizing pain to the point she was going to end it all. But as she walked into the bathroom with shaking hands, the pills spilled onto the floor. At that moment, God said to her, hold on, I'm not done yet. Stirred by hope, she threw the pills away. And a week later, God sent a rainbow, and she knew that everything would be okay. Listen to the chorus of her song. Hold on just a little bit longer. I know it's going to be okay. These days are going to make you stronger. You'll find purpose in your pain. Hold on just a little bit longer. Deep down, there's a well of faith. Let hope arise as you're lifting up my name and just hold on. God used her deepest pain and suffering to make something beautiful of her life. 
God has given her the gift of music, which she shares, uses to share hope even in the midst of suffering. Seek Jesus and let him help you work through your pain and then choose to respond in forgiveness and in love. Theologian Reinhold Newberg says, forgiveness is the final form of love. The next lyric says, if you hate me, I will love you. Hate is such a strong, strong emotion. We see it so much today in our world. Amen? It is a hate that is fueled by jealousy, anger, racism, differing opinions and beliefs. We seem to be bombarded daily with hate-filled words and actions. Hate? is Satan's calling card. Hate is the complete and total opposite of love. Proverbs 10, 12 says, Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all. Well, what does Jesus have to say about love? He had a lot to say. When asked by the teachers of the law what the most important command, Jesus responded, Love the Lord our God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater command than these. And in Matthew 5, he tells us, You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy. And pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. You know, God hates anything that is contrary to his holiness. So if we say we are a follower of Jesus and his teaching, how can we harbor hate for another human being? Isn't that a sin? How can we hate another person who was also created by the same God who gave each of us life. The next set of lyrics, I kind of just put all together. If you're helpless, I will defend you. If you're burdened, I'll share the weight. And if you're hopeless, let me show you there's hope in the Jesus way. Have you ever felt helpless? You just don't know where to turn or what to do next. The situation you are in or dealing with leaves you feeling powerless and most likely paralyzed with fear. Do you have or have you had a child or family member walking down the wrong path, living under the burden of sin? Have you or have you known someone who was struggling with or has struggled with an addiction Depression, a mental illness, living in an abusive relationship, then you know that hopeless, helpless feeling. How about a tragic loss that leaves you feeling devastated? You know, there are many times in this journey of life we find ourselves facing many burdens a cancer diagnosis, family problems, job loss, financial difficulty. Divorce, the death of a family member or a close friend. I could go on and on and on. The burdens can become overwhelming, and they leave us feeling helpless and hopeless. But what does Jesus say? He says, come to me, all you that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Don't those words just fill your soul with comfort and hope? Jesus cares. I'm not alone. As Christians, we are instructed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When he walked this earth, he always defended the weak and helpless. He always cared and showed compassion and mercy to those who were experiencing the most difficult of times. He came to offer hope. To the hopeless. He came to offer new life and a new way of, life, of living. 
Romans 5, 1 to 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. When troubles come, and they will come, what should our response be? Our words and actions should be a reflection of Jesus, who showed love and compassion to everyone he met. As the body of Christ, we are to reach out and offer help not only to those within this body of faith believers, but to our friends, neighbors, and even the world. Just a simple phone call to listen, an offer of a prayer, sharing of a meal, donations of food and clothing for the homeless. These are just a few of the acts of mercy and kindness we can do to support and encourage those around us. I was reminded of the recent devastating fire when I was writing this in Maui. How helpless those folks must feel right now. They've lost everything. And while we can't be there physically to help, we can pray for them. And if led, contrib contribute to organizations like Convoy of Hope or Samaritan's Purse, who are there on the ground to provide help and hope in the middle of this crisis. The next lyrics, if you strike me, I will embrace you. If you chain me, I'll sing your praise. If you kill me, my home is heaven. In Acts 19, <coughs> excuse me, we find Paul and Silas. They have been severely beaten, chained, and thrown in prison. And what are they doing? Are they complaining and whining and carrying on? They're carrying on all right. They are praying and singing hymns to God. What an amazing witness to the guards to hear these men after they've been beaten and chained and put in prison singing praises to their God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We can praise God and be filled with joy and thanksgiving no matter what is going on in our life. Praising God in either word or song will lift our spirits and remind us of the blessings we already have. And that God, the God who loves us more than anyone, is right there with us, giving us strength for each new day. Craig comes home sometimes, and I'm cleaning, and I've got my praise music turned up so loud. He says, you think you can hear that? But when I'm at my worst and at my lowest, I start singing. Unfortunately, we live in a world filled with violence. We're just walking down the street, going to the mall or school or even church can result in the loss of innocent life. It can cause us to become overwhelmed with fear and anxiety. But as redeemed children of God, we do not need to fear death. For we have the assurance of eternity with God. We know there is a special home waiting for us in heaven. Where all of this craziness will be no more. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. God has given us free will to choose our path. He has given us the freedom to make our own choice, our own way or the Jesus way. 
there's that line in the sand that Phil Wickham speaks about. When we humble ourselves before God, seek his forgiveness, and surrender our hearts and will to him, he covers us with his grace and forgiveness. We become his children. We can come into his presence with praise and thanksgiving, adoration and singing of his love and holiness, no matter what trials we face. Romans 12 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's great mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Being here in worship each Sunday with you is the highlight of my week. It fills my sometimes empty cup. You know, worship allows us to step out of the world and into the holy presence of God. And it's here we find encouragement and hope. I learned from Pastor Steve's teaching, and I love singing praises to our Father, who is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. God calls us to be holy as he is holy. We have been set apart and freed from the chains of sin. Amen? We have been filled with the enormous power of the Holy Spirit, which we don't tap into enough. And I'm talking about me. He's there. Got to tap into that power source. And that Holy Spirit will help us in our walk with Jesus. Tap into that power source every day sometimes every minute of every day. You know, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and following his teaches changes everything. The enemy, though, will try to convince you you are totally self-sufficient and don't need a Savior. You do. He's a liar. Satan is the king of lies. He will throw down his dirty playbook and tell you, you aren't worthy. You are. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Your decision to follow Jesus has eternal consequences. It will determine where you spend eternity. If you haven't made that decision, I urge you today, to open your heart and let the Holy Spirit lead you to the foot of the cross where there is love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Jesus is waiting. Like little children, we all stumble and fall from time to time in our walk. But he is right there to catch us, encourage us, and give us hope as we follow him, he is the perfect treasure worth searching for. And he is the answer to all life when Satan throws at us. So, choose Jesus and choose to live the Jesus way. Let us um, stand and, and we're going to sing the song, The Jesus Way. <laughs> And as we close the service out with this song, let the words sink into your soul and let them be a prayer of renewal and commitment to live for Jesus.
to go out this week and face the daily challenges of every day, whatever they may be, give it all to Jesus and let him show you his way of dealing with everything. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this time together. We thank you and praise you, Father, for your word and how it speaks to our hearts. And we thank you and praise you, Father, for those Christian men and women who, from their hearts, have been given the gift of music and song that speak to us through your word and their music. We thank you, Father, for each person here today. And as we go forth this week, help us all, Father, to live the way Jesus taught us to live and depend on him every minute of every day. Go in grace and peace to follow him every day. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. week.